Hi, Source Gamers, and welcome to yet another edition of All Content in Smash. This is Spassy, and I'll be your host today for our first post-E3 2021 All Content. And this one has been a long time coming. So yeah, let's get right to it and look at all the content we could possibly see from the Ninja Gaiden series. For those of you not familiar with the Dragon Ninja's storied history, Ninja Gaiden is one of gaming's longest-running series, debuting with two very different games in arcades and on the Nintendo Famicom way back in 1988. The most recent release comes in the form of the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection, which was released earlier this very month. The games of the Ninja Gaiden series are known for being some of the toughest and best games of the day. The NES trilogy is the definition of NES hard, but they're also just very polished and fun action platformers. They helped pioneer the use of cinematic cutscenes in games and are still considered to be amongst the best the 8-bit era had to offer. The series has titles on a myriad of platforms, including the Sega Master System, the original Game Boy, and even the Nintendo DS. But Ninja Gaiden is best known for the NES trilogy as well as for the modern 3D trilogy. The first game in the trilogy, simply titled Ninja Gaiden, was a must-own title for owners of the original Xbox and was, in fact, the fourth highest rated game on the system according to Metacritic. It might not seem like it now, but those first two 3D Ninja Gaiden games are hack and slash classics which really helped make the genre what it is today. Ninja Gaiden's symbol in Smash is going to be a shuriken. A bit simple? Sure, but hey, if Mega Man can get away with having a cog, Ninja Gaiden can get away with using a shuriken. The shuriken is just synonymous with ninja action, so I think it really fits the series well. This particular design is based on the windmill shuriken, which is an iconic weapon from the Ninja Gaiden series. Funnily enough, the Ninja Gaiden wiki does mention a Hayabusa clan symbol, but after a little digging we discover that that symbol is actually for Hayabusa brand motorcycles. So yeah guys, maybe don't always trust fan-made wikis? The character I'm choosing to represent Ninja Gaiden with is, obviously, Ryu Hayabusa. The Dragon Ninja has come to the forefront of Smash speculation due to several rumors and fake leaks that cropped up after Smash Ultimate's release, but he's a character that really should be considered for inclusion on his own merits. The heir to the Dragon lineage and inheritor of the mystic Dragon Sword, Ryu Hayabusa is the most feared and accomplished ninja of his generation. With a powerful mix of ninpo magic, amazing agility, and a mastery of most forms of armed combat, no target, be they ninja, demon, robot, or any combination of the three, is safe from his blade. And that's only talking about the actual Ninja Gaiden games. He's also main character and former champion in Team Ninja's 3D Fighter, Dead or Alive. But, since this is all content Ninja Gaiden, we'll keep references to that particular franchise to a minimum. Smash is, after all, for good boys and girls. Hayabusa seems like a great choice not only to represent Ninja Gaiden, but Koei Tecmo as a whole. As mentioned before, the character stars in two of the company's biggest franchises and has also crossed over into several others such as the Warriors and Neo series. And yeah, I know that Jin Hayabusa from Neo is technically Ryu's ancestor and not Ryu himself, but come on, it, it still counts, right? And yeah, it's also worth bringing up the fact that Nintendo and Koei Tecmo have this fantastic working relationship. Koei Tecmo has worked on a Metroid game, a Pokemon crossover with Nobunaga's Ambition, a mainline Fire Emblem game, and several Nintendo-focused Warrior spin-offs. They even co-own the Fatal Frame IP with Nintendo. None of this guarantees a Smash character or anything like that, but you know, it doesn't hurt. Alright, time for the fun part, the moveset. There are a lot of interesting ways you could take Hayabusa. Fun fact, he was planned as future DLC for PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale before that game stopped happening, <laughs> and his main gimmick for that game would be a stance change that would allow him to access a moveset based on fighting with his dragon sword and another moveset that was based on hand-to-hand -hand combat, presumably to represent his fighting style in Dead or Alive. That seems fun, but it didn't really scream Smash Bros to me. I also considered a moveset based on Hayabusa's Shadow Clone skill from Ninja Gaiden 2 on the NES. I ultimately decided against this though, since having an extra Ryu out at all times might be a strain during 8-player Smash. Plus, this would only really represent the classic 8-bit Ryu, and I wanted to take a more holistic approach. If you want to see a really cool and realized version of the clone moveset, however, please check out a link in the description for my buddy Vizard's Rival of Ether's workshop, Ryu Hayabusa. It's pretty cool. What I ultimately settled on is a version of Hayabusa that's a fast, mid-weight character with a lot of mix-up options and added utility due to his Nimpo gimmick. Yes, his Nimpo gimmick. I'm making Ryu DLC, of course he needs a gimmick. Nimpo uses key energy, which will be built up the same way as Hero's MP, through time and combat, but it'll only be used with his down B, unlike Hero where all his specials are tied to a consumable resource. See, Nimpo magic isn't meant to be a spammable part of his moveset. Rather, it's a way to give you that razor's edge <laughs> in combat if you know just when to use it. 
There will also be another way to build up key a bit quicker, uh, but I'll get to that when I talk about his specials more in detail. Ryu takes very little from the DOA games, but I thought it would be fun if his jab was his punch combo from that series. His forward air, running attack, and forward tilt would reference his NES animations, and his neutral air has to be some sort of variation of the jump and slash power up from the original games. Other than that, however, his normal and smash attacks will take primarily from the 3D trilogy. While I want all of Ryu's appearances to be referenced in some way, Koei Tecmo seems to default to the modern game when he crosses over, so I figure it makes sense if we do the same. Hayabusa's neutral special is a shuriken toss. See? I told you the series icon made sense. The move comes in two forms. If you tap the button, you'll throw out a quick, low damage shuriken. If you hold the button for a second, however, you'll throw out a windmill shuriken. This version of the move is bigger, slower, and acts as a boomerang. If you jump before it comes back to you, you can have it go back and forth around you until it finds your position, just like in the NES games. These two projectiles have been with Ryu since the beginning and have made an appearance in almost every one of his subsequent games, so I had to make sure they found their way into his moveset. Ryu's up special is the best move in all of gaming. Ever. Don't at me. I am of course referring to the Izuna Drop. This is a move used by Hayabusa in the 3D Ninja Gaiden games, the 3D Ninja Gaiden games, the 3D Ninja Gaiden games, Ninja Gaiden! Hey! This is a move used by Hayabusa in the 3D Ninja Gaiden games as well as in Dead or Alive. He knocks an opponent up, grabs them, then does a spinning pile driver into the ground, head first. It's awesome. If used on the ground, Ryo will attempt to deliver a blow that will launch the fighter into the air. If he does, he'll join them and then slam them into the ground. If not, he'll simply do the knocking into the air animation to no avail. This works a bit differently in the air, though. If you hold up special while airborne, Ryo will just go straight into the Azuna drop animation. Yup, straight up and then straight down like a torpedo. If you catch someone on the way up, you'll take them back down with you. This is not the best recovery, to put it mildly. It has awful horizontal movement, and since it commits to the downward action of the move, it lends itself to suicides. But, you know, if you do grab someone, you can get some of those sweet, sweet Smash Bros. suicide KOs. Hayabusa's side special changes depending on whether or not you're on the ground. The aerial version is Flying Swallow, and the ground version is Steel on Bone. Personally, I prefer the air, so let's start with that one. Flying Swallow, debuting in the Xbox Ninja Gaiden, is a simple move in concept and execution. Ryu flies through the air at his opponent and delivers a lightning-fast slice with his sword. If an enemy is close, he'll home in on them. If not, it'll travel horizontally. This move has some extra utility as a recovery move, but it's pretty basic otherwise. Steel on Bone works similarly, but with a few twists. With this move, you travel in a straight line on the ground and then attack your opponent. If it lands, you'll end up going through them while they're launched at a vertical angle. You'll also gain additional ninpo if the move connects, just like in Ninja Gaiden 3. Also like in Ninja Gaiden 3, you can use this move as a counter. Sort of. While the Smash version won't deal any additional damage based on enemy attacks, any damage you take while performing the move will once again result in increased ninpo gain. And finally, we have Ryu's down special, his ninpo arts. The closest analog to a move currently in the game would be Hero's spell menu, but without the RNG. Ryu has four ninpo arts that are available at all times, as long as he has a key available to use them. Rather than a menu, Ryu would focus his mind and bring up a spell wheel similar to Shulk's Monado Arts. The techniques that he has available are as follows. Art of the Wind Blades, also Art of the Vacuum. This art is a bit of a cheat as it combines the Art of the Vacuum from Ninja Gaiden 3 for the NES with the Art of the Wind Blades from the modern trilogy. Although the Art of the Vacuum is a variation of the technique, so it still sort of makes sense. When used on the ground, Ryu shoots two waves of wind energy, one above him and one below him. The waves can go through solid ground and do decent enough damage. If used in the air, however, the Dragon Ninja will shoot both wind blades downward, which can aid in his recovery. Smash has this tradition of wind magic being used for recovery, and who am I to break away from tradition? Art of the Fire Wheel. For this move, Ryu focuses his key into several waves of fire that encircle him while constantly moving around him in a clockwise direction. This is Ryu's most defensive Nimpo art. The individual fireballs will do damage to other fighters, but will not make them flinch. And it will also block incoming projectiles. It's very similar to Mega Man's Leaf Shield, except for the fact that the projectiles did not eliminate fireballs, and Hayabusa can still act and fight as normal while the move is active. It only lasts 10 seconds though, so make sure to get the most out of your time with it. Art of the Inazuma. This lightning-based Nimpo is only found in the modern games. When Ryu uses it, he charges up and releases an electric burst in the shape of a sphere 360 degrees around his body. 
and if it hits, it stuns an opponent to the same degree as Zero Suit Samus' fully charged neutral special. Art of the Piercing Void This move can only be used when Ryu's Ninpo meter is at its max and is his most destructive Ninpo. Well, the most destructive outside of his final smash. But I'll get to that. For this attack, Ryu gathers ki and forms gravitational waves of energy into what is basically a human-sized black hole. He then shoots the ball of gravity straight forward, horizontally, where it will destroy anything in its path. It's large, it's slow, and it does a ton of damage. And just like the black hole item, it can suck a character in before it explodes them out. But you have to be very close to the ball for this to happen. It's about the size of a fully charged Samus power shot, so it's big, but not too big. A key meter to monitor your current amount of usable Nimpo is located above Hayabusa's portrait, with each quarter of the bar representing one unit of usable key energy with each unit being a different color. These colors correspond with their respective Nimpo arts, and how far along they are on the bar represents how much key they will use. It starts with blue, for Art of the Wind Blades, followed by red, for Art of the Fire Wheel, then yellow, for Art of the Inazuma, and finally purple, for Art of the Piercing Void. Now, thanks to Hayabusa's ability to pull up a spell wheel, you can use any art or even combination of arts when your Nimpo allows you to do so. So, if you're at max key, you could for example, perform one instance of Art of the Piercing Void, or you could cast Art of the Firewheel and still have enough key left over to throw out two Arts of the Windblade. You get the idea. As you can see, Hayabusa's Ninpo Arts are powerful, but again, don't expect these to be spammed the way hero spells are. If anything, you can expect to see them at the same rate you'd see something like Cloud's Fully Charged Limit. Maybe less if it really needs to be tuned that way. Finally, we have Ryu Hayabusa's Final Smash, or Final Smashes actually. His standard Final Smash is a Super Azuna Drop. It's a cutscene-style Final Smash where he grabs an opponent to deliver a souped-up version of his up special. If Ryo has a full Nimpo gauge, however, he'll launch into the Art of the True Inferno. This will drain his remaining Nimpo, but it'll allow him to perform his ultimate technique, where Ryo transforms into a dragon made of flame and consumes his enemy. If you're over 100% damage and get hit by this, you're losing his stock. Sakurai likes to use the most classic or iconic version of a character's design. As this is the case, I strongly considered using a version of Ryu Hayabusa's classic Ness costume as his primary outfit. That just didn't feel right, though. Like Sonic, he's a character that still gets used by his parent company, but when he does, he uses a modern design that's still very recognizable. Still, it would be weird to only have his modern costume, so as a compromise, I split up his costume between his modern and classic looks. The alts alternate between the two styles, with the modern 3D Hayabusa being his default. His first alternate color, then, is classic Ryu Hayabusa sporting a blue outfit with red trim. While this serves as his classic default, it's actually based on the classic costume's appearance in Ninja Gaiden Sigma. His first variation of the modern costume is a nice red and gold design based on the region of the mask, one of the main antagonists in Ninja Gaiden 3 and Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge. Listen. That might not have been the best game, but the region is a very memorable villain, and this costume looks clean. Next, we have the dark purple take on his classic outfit. This is a color scheme, his classic costume used in the first Ninja Gaiden on Xbox. Hayabusa's next alt is his modern costume colored white. This might not be the best color scheme for a ninja. I'd imagine it makes sneaking around tough, unless you're in the snow or something. So yeah, let's, let's consider this his winter outfit. It's from DOA 6 if you were wondering. The next classic alt actually covers two different games in the NES trilogy. First of all, Joe Hayabusa, Ryu's father, wears a similar orange outfit in the famous opening cutscene from the first game. That's the primary inspiration here. Second of all, though, Ryu's clone in Ninja Gaiden 2, The Dark Sword of Chaos, was also orange. We played around with the idea of making the clone its own alt, but we figured one orange color was enough. Next, we have a costume that references the Epigenos, which are basically demon versions of Ryu from Modern Ninja Gaiden 3. Every character needs an evil alt, so here you go. Evil Ryu. Not, not, not that evil Ryu. Different guys. Finally, we have the light blue and red number based not on the NES games, but on the arcade version of Ninja Gaiden. Yeah, this one is a bit similar to the main classic alt, but it has some key differences. Much like Richter's Symphony of the Night Alt, this uses a similar color scheme to a different costume, but changes the hue. Also, since red is more visible in the arcade sprite than the NES sprite, I decided to give Ryu a red scarf instead of a black one. It adds just enough color to make this alt stand out. Ryu's victory theme is an obvious one, the next mission music from the NES titles. For the record, the actual name of the track is Eye Catch, but um, I, I still just call it next mission.
For me costumes, I thought giving Koi Tecmo in general the spotlight felt right. First off, we do have a little something from Ninja Gaiden with a Black Spider Ninja Me Sword Fighter costume. Keeping with the ninja theme, I'm including Hayate from Dead or Alive as a brawler. The next two Me costumes are both from different Koei Tecmo franchises. They both also happen to be based on historical figures, oddly enough. First we have Lu Bu from Dynasty Warriors, and though he doesn't use a sword, the closest analog to his weapon is that, so he'll be a sword fighter. Honestly, he's right up there with Ryu Hayabusa when it comes to possible playable Koei Tecmo reps, so I had to throw him in. Finally, we get to another major Team Ninja franchise with William Adams from Neo. He's also a sword fighter because, you know, his weapon actually is a sword. I was stuck between two options for Ryu's stage. The first was Hayabusa Village. Preferably Hayabusa Village on fire, since that's how I remember it most of the time, and also because we somehow still don't have a Village on Fire stage in Smash. After some thought, though, I had to go with my second option, Sky City Tokyo. This version of Tokyo is visually interesting as it combines futuristic flair with some classical Japanese elements. This is also Hayabusa's stage in DOA, so it felt right to bring it over into Smash. This will be a stage where fighters duke it out on rooftops of the city while cherry blossoms are in bloom and robot drones and hover cars fly in the background. Also, it has tons of searchlights for some reason. And I don't know why, I guess it's the future, there's tons of searchlights. Fighting on the stage also takes place at night, so you can think of it as a prettier foresight, only smaller and with more room to actually fight. I would imagine several cameos could take place here. It'd be cool to see the shopkeeper Muramasa referenced in some way, and DOA stars that also appear in the Ninja Gaiden franchise, such as Ayani and Kasumi. Seemed like a given. Oh, and the stage in DOA also has this giant Buddhist statue that attacks the stage from time to time, slamming its massive hands down on fighters. That seems like the sort of thing that could work in Smash Bros. 2, so I guess we might see that. Ninja Gaiden has a lot of memorable tracks. The most memorable is Ryu's theme, sometimes known as Unbreakable Determination. But we did some research and we found out the actual localized name for that track is The Amazing Ryu. It turns out that the Japanese name is Ryu's Determination, but since we're working with the North American uh, release of these games, we're going to stick with The Amazing Ryu. Anyways, we made sure to include songs from every game in both the modern and classic trilogies. And although I didn't include it here, I would think that a few medleys would make it. Uh, maybe a medley of songs from the arcade game. That seems like a pretty Smash Bros. thing to do. classic mode is the way of the dragon because, you know, he's a dragon ninja. And also it's a reference to a Bruce Lee movie. So win-win. Although Ryu's home base is Japan, most of his adventures, from the arcade title to the NES title to the modern games, see him traveling to different locations across the globe to stop the rise of some sort of evil, usually demonic, power. 
The classic mode would see Ryu traveling to different locations across the world and fighting local opposition in order to find out more about a possible demon resurrection. Stage 1 starts on Ryu's home turf in Japan where he fights Ryu, the other one. This fight would take place in Suzaku Castle. Fighting a fellow master to get some information before heading out feels very in line with the modern Ninja Gaiden games, and plus, I had to get a Ryu vs Ryu fight in here somewhere, so starting out with it kind of works. For Stage 2, we move on to Sky City, Tokyo. Ryu continues his trek into the big city to see if he can find any leads. Unfortunately, he's ambushed by ninjas! The ninjas here would be Sheik and then three small Greninjas. It wouldn't be a Ninja Gaiden classic mode if we didn't have some ninja on ninja action, so here you go. Up next is New Donk City, subbing in for New York City, which is a fairly prominent locale in the Ninja Gaiden series. Hayabusa ends up in some trouble with the locals and has to fight through Mario and Little Mac before he can move on. Unfortunately, there's no possessed Statue of Liberty fight here. I did my best. Stage 4 is Summit, where you'll have to take on the Ice Climbers. Look, Hayabusa has to literally go to the far reaches of the globe sometimes. If he has to go to the Arctic to stop a demonic resurrection, he's gonna do it. And if you're in his way, you better get out. Next, we go from the freezing ice to the steamy jungle for Stage 5. Ryu finds himself tracking down an artifact in the Congo jungle. Congo with a K. Here he fights a giant ape that guards that artifact. That, that ape is with a DK. Stage 6 is Lumio City, which, let, let's be real, it's just Paris. He comes across a precognitive fighter, played by Shulk, and a witch, Bayonetta, which block his path to his ultimate goal. Also, you know, it's kind of the Europe theme, and Shulk and Bayo are kind of European, or at least they have British accents, so I mean, add some authenticity, I think. Finally, we arrive in Stage 7, the final fight against the ultimate evil, Master Hand. Nah, just kidding. We're actually traveling to the location of the demonic resurrection we were tracking a decrepit castle in the heart of Romania, where Hayabusa has to fight a former hero who himself is possessed by a malignant force. So, so yeah, you have to fight Dracula's first form, as well as a possessed Richter. Once both are defeated, you'll have to face down against Dracula's monster form to clear the mode. Alright guys, it's the moment you were waiting for! That's right, it's time for spirits! Of course, Ryu Hayabusa has two versions of his fighter spirit. One for modern Hayabusa, and one for the classic ninja. So let's get that right out of the way. Our legendary support spirit is Jackio, the boss of the first two Ninja Gaiden games on the NES. The fight is against a Ganondorf with a rocket belt. Once he's KO'd, a giant Ridley will show up to represent the second phase of his Ninja Gaiden 2 boss fight. Your reward for defeating him is a fire attack double up spirit. Perfect spirit for spamming Falcon Punch and free-for-alls. Alright, let's look at some ace spirits next. First we have Momiji. Ryu Hayabusa's apprentice and a fellow member of the Hayabusa clan. She's represented here by an orange corn who you'll fight on Suzaka Castle, which is the closest we'll get to Hayabusa Village. Dangerously high winds will be in effect for the fight since she is closely associated with that element. If you beat her, you'll receive a weight down defense spirit, as her wind will carry your feet. Our second ace spirit is Doku, the lord of the greater fiends and one of the main antagonists of the first modern Ninja Gaiden game. The battle once again takes place on Suzaku Castle, but this time you'll be squaring off against a Black Ike while taking some serious damage. All of his hits absorb life too, so you better appreciate the first strike advantage grab spirit he gives you. The final ace spirit is Ayani, best known from the DOA games, but she also plays a role in several Ninja Gaiden titles. My first instinct was to have her be represented by Sheik, but you know what? She's Wii Fit Trainer. And she favors side special. And the fight takes place on Tortimer Island. Because we're not all really good boys and girls, right? I mean, we have plenty of fierce female fighters on the roster, but how many great volleyball players do we have? Exactly. We might as well make the most of this opportunity. Anyway, you get a toss and meteor grab spirit from her. Because she has a real nice spike. Alright, on to the advanced spirits. First up is Genshin, the supreme ninja overlord of the Black Spider Clan and Ryu's main rival in the modern Ninja Gaiden 2. He's represented by a black wolf, and the fight takes place on an Omega version of Kalos Pokemon League. He'll start the battle with a Killing Edge and favors using Side Special. Additional fighters will spawn during the match. There'll be Mii Sword Fighters using the Black Spider Ninja Mii Fighter costume if it's purchased. If not, they'll just use a generic ninja costume. Your reward for finishing this fight is a Critical Health Attack Up Grab Spirit. Our next advanced spirit continues the trend of seeing Ryu's main antagonist get spirits as it is the Region of the Mask, who pestered Ryu all throughout Ninja Gaiden 3. This fight is on Sky City Tokyo and is against a Red Marth. Marth favors down special because, if you play Ninja Gaiden 3, you know this guy likes to counter. 
Midway through the fight, a giant Yoshi will spawn because, again, if you played the game, you know this guy likes dinosaurs. Tell me about the dinosaurs. Your reward this time is a perfect shield reflect defense spirit. Moving on, we have Irene Loom. She's an interesting character because she was reused love interest in the original trilogy, and she also plays a pretty big part in the modern game starting with part two. Her battle is against a black-clad Zero Suit Samus on Sky City, Tokyo. She'll start the battle with a ray gun, and she favors her neutral special. You're rewarded with an air defense up neutral spirit if you beat her. Our final two advanced spirits are support spirits. First is a DOA favorite, Kasumi. She's a slippery one, so she's represented by default Lucina with the ability to instantly escape from movement disabling effects. The fight is in Sky City, Tokyo. She rewards you with an improved escape support spirit once defeated. Next up is Robert T. Sturgeon, an ex-military man and an ace pilot. He, much like Irene, appears in both the modern and classic series. Your fight with him is a fight with a green Captain Falcon equipped with a rocket belt on Lilac Cruise. He also avoids conflict. The prize for this fight is a rocket belt equipped support spirit. That way, you can avoid combat too. We only have one final support spirit, and this one's a novice. It's Mizuki McLeod, the Japanese self-defense forces agent from the modern Ninja Gaiden 3. She's represented by a black fox, McLeod. No relation. You fight her in Frigate Orpheon because similar lab settings were pretty common in Ninja Gaiden 3. Like Robert, she's not a fighter, and if you defeat her, you get a jump up support spirit. Okay, we have one more primary spirit. Another novice, but kind of a fan favorite. It's Ryu's dad, Joe Hayabusa. Here's the thing, as the patriarch, or former patriarch, of the Hayabusa clan, we would expect him to be kind of a badass, but he's not. He sort of gets punked in both Ninja Gaiden trilogies. We fight him on Suzaka Castle. He's a, an orange Hayabusa. The match is a stamina battle. The enemy has reduced attack, defense, move speed, and jump power. But the enemy loves to jump! Joe also favors his side special. Your prize for sticking it out is a neutral spirit with no additional effects. Sorry, Joe, but I have to tell it like it is. And that about does it for our all-content Ninja Gaiden. I want to thank Shadow Link, who was basically my partner for this one, as well as Jamester, whose Twitter link you can find below. He's a huge Hayabusa fan, and he helped me out immensely in the planning phase. Another special thanks goes out to Hi Leo and Lewis Arison, both of whom asked for this all content through Patreon. So anyways, thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like what we do here at Source Gaming, consider donating to us on Patreon. You can suggest content, take part in our exclusive patrons-only channel, and see certain videos early. Well, bye guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you enjoyed that E3 reveal too. We're down to just one remaining fighter, but we're happy to keep making these as long as Smash Ultimate is still in development. So please look forward to more all-content videos, and as always, remember to return to the source. Ninja Gaiden! Hi!